Well, hey, my brothers and sisters, we have got a bit to get through today. PR900, Pro Sport, new gun laws, CP2 updates, and why rubber ducks are very useful for rat hunting practice. Your rifles, pictures of, and more. So let's get on with it. So first up, we have the PR900W, SMK, Artemis, Snow Peak, all the same rifle. Probably the cheapest PCP rifle you can get. I don't know, there may be one cheaper. But yeah, my very first PCP rifle. I only got it for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is close shooting rats between 10 and 25 yards. Now, I'm not gonna do a full review of it today. I will make that a separate video because there's a lot to come on this because I have an order coming from buck rail which will transform this so it's going to undergo the full tactical conversion and i'll also treat it to one of my very over the top camo jobs that's coming in the future what that's permitted me to do is to not decommission the cp2 but turn this into the very close quarters backup ratter i've put the pistol barrel back on it i've kept the moderator on it because these do bark without it and i've zeroed the laser at four meters the scope is zeroed at 10 meters nine shot magazine very handleable it's like a pistol but i can shoot it extended through the scope and once again buck rail parts don't you just love them by the time i finish with the pr 900 it'll be a matching set so. moving on and you probably noticed i'm sporting the maple leaf today that's in solidarity with our brothers and sisters over in canada there who are in the throes of having even more freedom stripped from them. Hang tough, brothers and sisters, it's worth fighting for. Apparently, I do have some female shooters that watch this channel. You are most welcome and power to you. Why is it women always seem to shoot better than men do? My other half does. She's a hell of a lot more accurate than I am. Moving on. Springer News, my beloved Air Arms Pro Sport. I'm gonna give her a bit of love and take her into an Air Arms Specialist local to me to have it tuned. It's shooting beautifully, pellet on pellet, it's absolutely sweet, it does everything a pro sport should do. But power's dropped off and she sounded pretty twangy. So I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to go for the Voltec kit. Not absolutely certain yet, but I will be advised by someone who knows better than me, i.e. the air arm specialist. At the same time, a friend of mine who's just bought a TX200 Hunter Carbine, not had it long, and he wants to take that in for further refinement. So uh, possibly a Voltec kit, I don't know. So there will be some Springer action coming up, befores and afters. So something else to look forward to for my fellow Springer shooters. I know there's a lot of you out there with good reason. Moving on. There's a channel that I discovered recently that I really have to share and it's Air Gun Alley Miami. I don't know if you've ever checked him out, you're probably already ahead of me there, but what a channel. The guy really goes the extra mile. I mean, goes the extra mile. They drive all the way out to Alligator Alley just to shoot a video. He's done videos on the Dragon Claw. What a rifle, man. I really got to shoot that thing. He does an awful lot of stuff with, if you're into the Umarex Training for Engagement series of, you know, pump shotgun, double barrel shotgun, pistols, so on and so forth and he checks a load of custom ammunition and he films the most entertaining videos testing out these and it's very informative as well uh, the, the dude's so cool he's great he's funny very entertaining and i absolutely love him and when i do my usa tour i will hopefully get down to miami and shoot that dragon claw and moving on the results of a particularly savage and senseless event down in the west country and cut a long story short has prompted the anti-gun lobby to start making a lot of noise about gun restriction further gun restriction with regard to shotguns and firearms in the uk but closer to home does it have any effect on the air gun community i just want to note that it's often the case that once they start looking at anything with a barrel the air gun community will usually not escape unscathed and so I think it's very, very important on all of us in this country and everywhere, really, to be extra vigilant on how we comport ourselves as shooters, as air gunners. Each one of us who owns an air rifle is an ambassador for the sport. It's a responsibility. Anything that comes with a barrel has a responsibility. And we, for the most part, shoulder that responsibility as we should. And I think it's just worthwhile reminding ourselves, me included, because I can get a bit gung-ho at times in my backyard here. And with that in mind, I want to talk about targets. And I'm ditching a couple of targets, and I'll tell you for why. Now, there's a couple of targets down here. See what I'm talking about here? Spoons. Yeah, these are pretty well battered. I think the Gamo did that. 
Now the main thing when you're shooting in your backyard is we must not let the round exit our perimeter. Okay, we've got a nice solid backstop. We know what we're doing there, common sense involved. But there are some targets which are just too unpredictable. I'm actually gonna remove these spoons. Probably think that three out of every 10 will ricochet, but I don't know where they're going. They could well be going next door. Now, although it's all holiday homes around here, I've still got to watch myself here. What we're actually up against is, it's not clearly defined. It's a question of interpretation. I mean, all someone's got to do is phone the police and say they are disturbed and alarmed by the fact that there's a guy next door with a gun. As a matter of it's an air gun. That's all they've got to say. And if they can convince an officer that they are that distressed about it, then you could have your guns taken away from you. We have to be mindful of this. It's just so badly defined. I mean, if you get an officer come out to you who is, you know, a fairly level-headed guy, you might be able to talk them down a little bit and we can all get along. And you can moderate your shooting to when it's not such a problem to them. But if you get a really overzealous officer who doesn't really take to you and what you're doing, you could well lose your rifles, well lose your guns. And we work hard for these damn things, you know, not about to give them away. So it's worth bearing in mind that anything that can cause a ricochet, you've just, you just got to take it down. As much as I love my little spoons, they're going. It's like the pellet catcher targets, you know, the steel ones with the paper targets in them. Jury's out on them when there's people about, because they're so loud. I mean, I know that you can get quiet targets and everything else. I mean, I've been shoving like rags into the back of the pellet catchers, completely negates the point of a pellet catcher because then all the pellets just pile up behind the paper target. Not great. Moving on. Well, I'm on the subject of targets. When you're practicing for rat shooting, these are one of the best things I have found to practice with. They're so cheap, they're cheaper than any other targets I can find. They're very small, they're a nice small target to aim for and you can mark their eyes with a sharpie, crosshairs on their forehead. So when the rat's facing you, you can pop him and when he's side on, you can pop him between the eye and the ear. So these are really useful and I just get them, I throw them on the lawn and offhand, just shoot. And you're aiming for the kill zone. You're aiming for that kill point all the time. These are really good and they're dirt cheap. I just bought a bunch of them, about 50 of them off eBay. Now, this is my pro sport. We were talking about modifying it earlier. You know, getting it tuned up and that, which I will do. God, I love this thing. One of our viewers, John, I won't give his surname because I haven't got his permission to, has sent me a couple of pictures of his pro sport and I'll put them on the screen now for you. They're not very high resolution, but you can see roughly what's going on here. We are talking one killer target rifle. Now I'm most interested to see stuff like this. So if you've got a customized rifle, you've modified your rifle, it's just a rifle you're really proud of and you think people would be interested to see it, please do use my email address, which is on the homepage of this channel. Send me some pictures and I will make a video featuring your rifles and pistols, whatever. But that'd be really cool to see what everybody's shooting, you know, all around the world, you know. Let's see what you're shooting. What have you done to it? What have you modified on it? And I'll give you all a shout out in a special video about your guns. And that's it for today, my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Keep shooting, keep safe. See you in the next one.